Hi, in this module, I'm going to formally define constraint satisfaction problems and the more general notion of a factor graph. So let's begin with an example, uh, a voting example. So let's imagine there are three people, um, person one, person two, and person three, and each one is going to cast a vote, either blue or red, blue or red, blue or red. And we know something about these people. We know that person one is definitely gonna vote blue here. And we know that person three is gonna, is leaning red. We also know that person one and person two are really close friends, so they must agree on their vote. Whereas person two and person three are mere acquaintances and their votes only tend to agree. So the question is, um, how are all these people going to influence each other and ultimately cast votes? So we can model this problem using a factor graph. Um, we're gonna define a set of variables, x1 for person one, x2 for person two, x3 for person three. And we're going to define a set of factors that capture each of these four uh, constraints or preferences. So let's begin with f1. f1 is going to capture the fact that person one is definitely blue. So I'm gonna write F1 as uh, specifying as a table, specifying for each value of X1, um, I'm going to specify a number. So F1 of X1 is going to be zero if X1 is red, and it's gonna be one if X1 is B or blue. And this captures the fact that a zero means uh, no way this is gonna happen, and one means it's okay. So mathematically, I can write this factor f1 as um, an indicator function of x1 equals b. So now I'm going to write these indicator functions without, uh, usually you would write a one here, I'm just gonna drop it um, for notational simplicity. So let's look at um, leaning red. So this factor is going to be x f4, and this is also gonna to correspond to a table where for every possible value of x3, um, I'm going to specify a value. So r is going to be two and b is going to be one. And mathematically, this is going to be f4 is equal to x3 equals r, this indicator function, plus the smoothing uh, constant of one. So remember this indicator is going to return one or zero, depending on whether this condition is true or false. And I'm adding one, so I offset that to a two or a one. So intuitively, you can think about this as person three uh, prefers um, R to be maybe twice as much. So now let's look at these other factors. So F2 is going to represent the fact that um, person one and person two have to agree. So again, I'm going to look at all the possible assignments to the variables in the scope of um, F2. So these two variables, x1 and x2. And for every value, I'm going to assign a particular non-negative number. So here, um, rr, I'm gonna say that's one, it's okay, they agree. And if they don't agree, I'm gonna return zero because I really don't like that. And um, if they return b, that's agree, so that's a one. So more succinctly, I can write this factor as f2 as um, x1 equals x2. And now finally, um, for f3, f3 is gonna capture whether x2 and x3 tend to agree. And this table is gonna look like this for x2 and x3. Um, if they're both r, I'm gonna return three. If they're different, I'm gonna return two. Um, and if they're all both b, then I'm gonna return three. So mathematically, um, this factor is going to be um, indicator function of whether x2 equals x3 um, plus a smoothing factor of two, which makes it uh, instead of one zero zero one, that gives me uh, three two two three. So there's a kind of a mild preference for these two people to agree um, compared to not agree. So now if you click on this demo in the slides here, this is gonna take you to a little JavaScript um, application here where you can actually write your own uh, factor graph. Um, and we're gonna come back to this um, later. 
So this is a first example of a factor graph capturing this simple voting situation. So now let's look at a different example um, that we look at an overview module. So this is Map Coloring Australia. So remember, Australia has these um, seven beautiful provinces, and each one needs to be assigned a color. Um, so each of these provinces is going to be represented as a variable. And here I'm going to give every variable a name, um, WA for Western Australia, NT for Northern Territory, and so on. And I'm going to use big X usually to denote the set of all variables. Each variable is also going to take on um, a set of values, um, which in this case is going to be red, green, or blue. And now I'm going to define the factors of this factor graph. Um, so for every two neighboring provinces, I want to say that they can't have the same color. So for example, F1 is uh, going to say WA and NT must be different. That corresponds to this uh, factor over here. F2 says NT and Q must be different. And that's going to correspond to this factor here and so on and so forth. So now we're ready to formally define a factor graph. So a factor graph is uh, going to consist of a set of variables, um, x1 through xn in the general case. Remember, big X is going to denote the set of all variables, where each variable xi takes on values in some set of possible values known as the domain of variable i. And a factor graph also consists of a set of factors, um, generally denoted f1 through fm. Each fj is going to be a function that takes on um, takes as input an assignment to the variables and going to represent a, represent a return a, a non-negative number. So it's really important that this function return a non-negative number instead of uh, a negative number because later we'll see that we're going to multiply them uh, together. So that's the definition of a factor graph. So a bit of terminology here. Um, so um, I'm going to define the scope of a factor as a set of factor as, as a set of variables it depends on. So in the map coloring example, the scope of F1 is going to be simply um, W, A, and N, T. Um, this corresponds to visually the set of variables that this, um, this factor is touching. Um, the arity of a factor is the number of variables in the scope. Um, so in this case, you just count how many variables are here. The answer is two. Um, uh, some shorthand notation. So unary factors are ones that have error D1 and binary factors are ones that have error D2. And constraints are factors that return zero or one. So notice that factor can return any non-negative number, but a special case is when it returns zero or one, which means yes or no, essentially. And in this context, um, F1 is a binary constraint. So one thing to remember about factors is that each factor usually depends only on a, a, a subset of the variables um, and not all the variables. And this is going to be kind of important uh, when we talk about an algorithmic efficiency. So now we fully define um, what a factor graph is. I'm going to now talk about the notion of uh, assignment weight. So let's go back to the voting example. In the voting example, we had a four factors corresponding to whether um, the person one and person three were voting a certain way and whether person one, person two, and person two, and person three uh, agreed or not. Um, so an assignment is going to be um, just um, assignment of values to each of the, the variables. In this case, there's three variables, x1, x2, x3. And each assignment is going to be associated with a weight. So here's how the weight is going to be calculated. I'm going to go through each of these factors, and I'm going to plug in this assignment and read out a particular number. So let's take this factor, F1. So what is X1? It's R. So I'm going to get a 0. Um, what about this factor? 
what is um, x1 and x2? It's going to RR. I'm going to return a 1. I'm going to copy that down here. What about this factor? x2 and x3 are RR. I'm going to get a 3. And finally, the fourth factor, f4. Um, what is x3? It's R. So I'm going to read out a 2. And the all of these uh, the outputs of the factors are numbers. Um, I'm going to multiply all of them together. I'm going to get a weight. And that weight in this case is zero. So now you can go through all the other possible assignments of values to all the variables. Um, in this case, there are eight possible assignments. Um, and each of them is going to have a particular weight. So now let's look at the demo. Um, if you click step here, that's going to run this inference algorithm and produce um, a, a, a weight for every possible assignment that's um, that has non-zero weight. So in this case, we verify that there is two possible um, assignments um, that have non-zero weight, um, assigning BBR and uh, BBB. Okay, so now let's uh, switch over again to the map coloring example just to see how weights are computed here. So here is a possible uh, assignment and uh, of uh, colors to provinces. So here, notationally, I'm gonna make a slight change. It's gonna be sometimes convenient to be representing assignments in this kind of dictionary format where um, the variables have names. So here I have um, WA is assigned red, um, NT is assigned on green, and so on and so forth. So literally you can think about this as a Python dictionary if you like. Um, what is the weight of this assignment? Well, in this particular case, all neighbors have different colors. And remember that each factor is just going to thumbs up, um, return one, if uh, the two adjacent neighbors have this uh, different colors. So I'm just gonna get one times one times one, and that's just one. Now consider alternative assignment where I've simply replaced NT with red here. So NT it becomes red. And now we can see that the weight of this altered assignment is going to be uh, zero because these two factors are going to evaluate to zero, um, these two here. And one thing you might realize very quickly here is that um, all it takes is for one factor to veto um, the entire assignment. Because we're multiplying, if one of the factors returns zero, then the product of all the factors is also going to be zero. So here is a general definition of assignment weight. Assignment, little x, is going to be um, x1 through xn, has a weight, um, and this weight uh, is a function that takes an assignment and returns um, the product over all possible factors um, of the factor fj applied to an assignment. And here, no, even though um, each factor only depends on a subset of variables, I'm, I'm kind of simplifying notation by just passing in the entire assignment. In practice, I would only pass in only the variables that are in the scope of uh, fj. So a bit of terminology, an assignment is consistent if its weight is greater than zero. Um, a weight can't be negative because all the factors return non-negative numbers. So a weight is zero. Um, that means the assignment is inconsistent. And the objective of a constraint satisfaction problem, finally getting to what the point of all this is, is to find the maximum weight assignment. Mathematically, it's written argmax over all possible assignments x of weight of x. And a constraint satisfaction problem is said to be satisfiable if the weight of a maximum weight assignment is greater than zero. Another way to say the same thing is whether there exists some consistent assignment. And note one thing is that the weight here in the context of factor graphs and constraint satisfaction problems 
are not the same as uh, a weight in that we study in machine learning. Those weights can be negative or non-negative, um, but these weights in constraint satisfaction problems and factor graphs have to be non-negative. One other uh, small comment is that here we are actually defining a slight generalization of constraint satisfaction problems where factors can actually um, have not just zero or one weights, uh, but actually um, any non-negative uh, value. So constraint satisfaction problems um, actually is a general umbrella term that captures several important uh, cases. So the first is Boolean satisfiability problems, otherwise known as SAT. So in these cases, um, the variables are Boolean valued and the factors are logical formulas such as x1 or not x2 or x5. So satisfiability problems are MP-complete problems, which means that in the worst case, they're really, really hard and we don't have efficient algorithms for solving them. But in practice, um, it turns out that we've there's been an extraordinary amount of progress in SAT solving and we can actually routinely solve a, a SAT problems with many, many more variables than we might be able to predict uh, by theory alone. So there's a joke that says, you know, theoreticians reduce a problem to SAT if they want to show that it's uh, hard to solve and practitioners reduce a problem to SAT if they want to solve the problem. Um, another class of problems that are is important is linear programming. In this, in linear programs, the variables are real valued numbers, and the factors are a linear inequality such as x2 plus x3, uh, x5 less than or equal to 1. And uh, despite the fact that variables can take on an infinite number of values, linear programs have the special structure that makes them especially efficient to solve, and there's been a lot of work in uh, solving linear programs efficiently. Um, integer linear programs are same as linear programs except for the variables are integer valued. And this, this, the fact that they're integer values makes these incredibly hard, again, just like satisfiability problems. Mixed integer linear programs are, um, are problems where variables are reals and integers, um, and these problems are also hard to solve. So in summary, we formally defined the notion of a factor graph, which includes variables and um, factors. So variables specify unknown quantities that we need to ascertain, and factors specify preferences or constraints for partial assignments. And one thing th that's special about factor graphs is that you're specifying constraints and preferences in a local way. So suppose you're modeling, and you think of a, a particular preference that you have, you can just simply write down a factor um, in terms of the variables that, are, that matter and throw that factor into the constraint satisfaction problem. And now the hard work comes in actually uh, processing all these set of factors. Um, so a key definition is the weight of a possible an assignment is the product of all the factors. And this is where all the magic happens. This is where the you have to think globally about all the factors together. And um, the point of a constraint satisfaction problem, again, is to find the maximum weight assignment. And this is, again, uh, something that requires global reasoning over all the factors. And so the model here to remember is specify locally if you're modeling and optimize globally, which is what the inference algorithm will do. That's the end of this module.